So good day and welcome back. All right. First things first, forget the color and stuff. I'm just experimenting. So this may be the color I stick with, but maybe not. So just trying to make the slides look a little bit nicer. But that aside, we're going to be looking at um, Node.js modules. So we've talked about modules before or Node packages, and we've even used when we started off this chapter seven by playing around with a, importing a package, a node um, package called um, JSON read write, and we use it to read a JSON file, and we use it to write a JSON file, but you can do that also. And then we, um, in our application, we've been using the HTTP module that's provided with node um, to write our backend server. So now we're gonna look at um, how do we write our own modules, because our application is getting kind of long. If you look at our app.js file now, it's about, I don't know, 500 lines or something. So we need to bring that onto control and make it manageable. So in this video, we're gonna look at that. Okay, so specifically, our objectives are in this video is to understand what a module is, why we would wanna use one, and then look at the different ways you can write a module and then put that into practice after we play around with some simple mod, writing simple modules by refactoring our API backend server application. What is a module? Well, at least in Node.js, your module is gonna be contained in one file. Now, this is in stark contrast to some other languages where a module might be implemented or a library or a package might be implemented using multiple files. For example, in Java, you can have a package and it spans multiple files. Same thing like in Go. You can have a package in Go that span multiple files. Not in Node.js. One module per file. Now, what can you put in a file? Well, it's a JavaScript file, and it's whatever is legal JavaScript code you can put in uh, this file. So that includes variables, constants, functions, classes, objects, array, whatever JavaScript code you want, you can put inside of a module. Now, that does not mean that if I just take a JavaScript file and just put anything in it, and I, I can just call that file a module. There's a certain format and structure to the file that you must adhere to before it can be called a, mo a module or a package. And the reason why is because we need to be able to load it. And um, Node.js have a convention for how it wants you to write a package so it can later load parts of it so it, it makes it usable for you. Now, the reason why this is kind of important is because you might put, let's say, four functions in a file, but one of them you want to expose for others to call, the user of your package or module, but the other three are just supporting, so you don't want to expose those. So obviously you would need a way to be able to differentiate between what's exported and what's not exported. So we're going to get into that in a bit. I mentioned one reason you might want to have a module is that you might have some function you want to expose for reuse that in your own code or to get someone else. But other times you might not have code that you want to share with anyone, but it's just a way we still want to use modules and know about them because it's going to help you organize your code and your task. Like when you go to work on a big application, um, there's only so much you can work on at any one time. And being able to break your application into manageable pieces is going to help you to be successful and not get frustrated and be able to maintain your application. So modules um, are, a way to, are one way to do that. Um, the other thing is in case you want, again, we talk about reuse, but you want to share or work with other users other individuals having modules that you know you can say oh you work on this I work on that or I'm gonna work on this today and the other one next week allows you to do that so those are just some of the reasons why you'd want to use modules and break your larger application up into modules let's take, take a look at this very simple application and it might be a little bit hard to see in this video but I encourage you to just click on the link um, for in the description get the slides um, or open the PowerPoint presentation. So either one, you have a bunch of images um, that you can look at or the PowerPoint presentation and just look at, keep those um, on the side and pause the videos when we're looking at code so you can see it clearly. Or actually go look at the code also in the repository. So three ways you can really see this. Anyway, so this application is fairly simple. Um, it looks like there are three kind of parts to it really. There's the thing that has to do with the application itself then there's some statement that has to do and function that has to do with login. And then there's some stuff that has to do with math operation, you know, getting pi and then calculating the square of pi. And it seems like if we can possibly break this up, so how can we break this up into modules? This very simple application. 
first and easiest thing we might want to do is pull out the max stuff. So here we've taken, um, you know, pi and the function to square it and put it in a separate JavaScript file you see on the right. And then we say const mat equals require. So we use the require keyword just as being used in our application to bring in the HTTP module. And we require that in our mat file. And then we try to access using that variable those properties. And then we can see when we try to run our code, it fails. It said on pi is undefined. And I don't know what mat that square it is. And that's because we didn't write this module properly as um, Node.js expect. So if we go over to the Node.js website and click on the link there, and you go to the website, it's gonna show you a very simple example of how you write a module. And the key there seems to be that we pretty, sort of did everything right, but we didn't um, assign to the exports property the things that we wanna make public. And this goes back to what I said before. In your module, you might wanna keep some things private and expose other things to sort of make them public. And so, we need to say exactly what we want to make public. And so we're going to do that now. And then when we retry it, we see that our code is going to work just fine. So again, it seems pretty straightforward and pretty simple. And if you look at how Node.js um, is um, this format for writing a module, it looks very similar to how we use um, controller and services in Angular. So it shouldn't be too much of a stretch here. We saw one way of um, writing a module just now was to assign to the export object that Node.js is going to pass to our um, code when, it, um, when we do the requires for this um, file for our module, and we can attach the things we want to export. Another way is to simply assign to the exports object um, a new object overwriting it uh, with all the properties we want to expose. And so you see this example, we do that for our login module where we have all the functions and then we just create appropriate properties for them, um, different than the name of the functions, and that's okay because it's just the properties on that object, that, the object that will be usable by the user. And then we assign that new object, JavaScript object, to modules that export. So again, Node.js, when you say required, is reading in your, your code wrap it in a function and then call in that function. And one of the parameters it passed to that function is module, another one is exports. And so that's why we have access to those variables and we can overwrite them or augment them. Finally, there's yet a third way of writing a module. And this comes in handy when you wanna have a module that needs to do some initialization. So here, our module, a module was required on line seven, but notice on line 16 what happens. I call a module as a function and pass it some value parameter and then save the result and then now on that I can invoke the different functions. And so if you look over on the right hand side what's really happening is to the export um, object I just assign a function instead of an actual object and I will write with a function so when Node.js do a require on my module it's actually getting back a function, an anonymous function pointer and our reference to an anonymous function, and that is what goes into the a module variable, which I call like a function because it is referring to a function. And then of course my function does some work and then returns an object that represents all the um, public things that I can invoke on it. So again, just another way if your module needs to be initialized, how you can accomplish that. All that is in the documentation and Node.js website. These are very simple examples. I think they capture the salient points of writing modules. So please look at them. And if you have questions, let me know. But I think you should at least be able to write the very first type of basic module. How do we understand how to write modules? We can now start about how we refactor our to-do API server. And so let's look at what we need, or one way of breaking it down. We can say all the endpoints should have all the implementation for the endpoint should sort of be their own module. So we have an authentication service endpoint, and so we implement our endpoint and call it a service. And you know, we have one that does authentication. Right now it's just login, um, but we can consider it a separate responsibility sort of. Uh, we have one that does all the user thing, which is create user, add user, delete user, update user. That time seems very separate from logging in, right? Like managing users is very different than 
you know, who's allowed to, to use the application. And of course, task seems like its own thing. And um, then of course, we have the login stuff, uh, which again is something separate. And, you know, some utility functions that we've been using, which is to extract like the ID from the path. And that doesn't seem specific to anything. Seems like sort of like a core application sort of building block sort of, if you want to think of it that way. And of course, we have the main application itself, which just kind of pulls all these things together and use it. Well, we have our modules and our applications sort of organized. We can actually see something that looks like an application architecture that we could kind of talk about. And we could see things that you can pull out and possibly reuse somewhere else. Um, the other thing you can see is how similar a lot of the code uh, becomes now. Um, don't try to focus on this here so much to read the individual parts, but just try to look high level at how similar these two pieces, two um, files look. And I can guarantee you that the user database JavaScript file and the task database JavaScript file. And they look very, very sim similar at, um, when you look at them from this far. And actually when you look at them in a code too, you'll see they're very similar. Same thing when you go down to the user endpoint service and the task endpoint service, look very, very similar. And I've renamed the method search to show that oh, they're not that very different. So for example, for the user database service, you know, you just need add, delete, remove, update, that's our, uh, add, remove, et cetera. And you need the same thing for the task database service. And for the API services, whether it's user or task, you need, you know, post, get, and so on. So our create. So why not name the methods that way? We don't need the very long, unique names that we had before because now that we're using modules, the name of the modules when we require them would be used to differentiate, you know, the different methods that we're calling. And you'll see that in the main code. If you pull up the main code and you take a look at it, you'll see that. Okay, so um, I know this might seem like a lot, but it isn't too bad. It's fairly repetitive. And the one of the reasons to show you how similar the code is, is to basically say to you that we have a solution for this. So we don't have to keep doing these repetitive things. We don't use framework that provides um, some of this glue and repetitive stuff. Anyway, uh, thanks for spending your time with me. Hope to see you in the next video. Again, if you have time um, to check it out, um, test it, play with it. Let me know if you have questions or concerns. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe, spread the word. Thanks. Bye.